Dear viewers, welcome again to a new episode. And uh, Misha Kuddin, and with me today we have a lovely city. Thank you. City, how are you? I'm very well, thank you. Thank you for making time for us. It's a lovely day outside. It was yesterday, actually. Not yes, not quite so nice today, but um, yes. Yeah. Would you like to introduce yourself to our viewers and then we... Yeah. yeah. So I'm Sue Chadwick. I'm a solicitor. Moved to London about a year ago, specialised in planning. And by a number of reasons, ended up at the um, Muslim Centre on the open day a couple of weeks ago. And um, you asked me if I would do an interview about my experience there and my experience of Islam and, and Muslim faith. Yeah. Awesome. I'm yeah. glad me, you know, I met you actually, obviously. You know, I was really on that day when I was talking to you, mm -hmm. and um, I found something you know, refreshing within you because you told me if, you know, you used to finish the whole you know, mm -hmm. Quran, you read that. And I just wanted to know mm -hmm. what you thought about it. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of Muslims, we don't even read the whole book ourselves in our own language that we understand. Yeah. We read Arabic. Yeah. And there are millions of people out, you know, who have been memorized the Quran. It's fine. <coughs> but a lot of them don't understand what they're reading. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I'd love to know that your journey through uh, the Quran would be interesting. So, um, I never thought of reading it before, but um, obviously living in London in 2016, there's a lot of what I would call discourse about faith, and particularly Muslim faith. And I have a lot of people basically shouting at me from the media about what I should and shouldn't be thinking. And um, I resent being told what to think about anything. So I was increasingly frustrated with, with being told what to think and at the same time not knowing what to think for myself. So I thought, primary text, go to the primary text and read the Quran. So in January I got it and just read it. Um, and I like to, if I'm going to read a big book, I like to get through it in a month so that you can kind of live the text. Um, and so I just read it in January this year, and it was, yeah, it was quite an experience. How was your routine? Did you, uh, like, uh, you see, finish in a month, so would that be like, I'll do it in one day, I'll finish about 10 pages, 20 pages, 10 pages? I look to read, um, the about, I look at then how many books, how many pages there are, how many days there are in a month, and I will do the minimum of whatever it is per day. But if I'm interested, then I would go over. So it's just that discipline of that regular reading. And that way, you, know, you just get it done. Just get it done. So what was the expectation before you read? What were you thinking you're going to see? Or what's that book about? Yeah. Well, I've read the Bible, New and Old Testament, and quite a bit of um, spiritual literature, the old um, Christian spiritual classics. And I was expecting something like St. Paul, or Deuteronomy, or Leviticus, which are books of, not so much St. Paul, but lots of rules, particularly Leviticus. It's just rule after rule after rule about what you should and shouldn't eat. And, and then Paul is very much, women do this, men do that, you do this, you do that. And that's what I was expecting, and I was expecting to feel quite cross about it. Um, and from the first chapter, it was not like that at all. So it was a kind of mental sitting back and kind of thinking, well, obviously this isn't what I thought it was going to be in any sense. Um, I have to let it come to me rather than deciding what it's going to be like. And I don't, I mean, coming from a, a Western culture, it, I was unprepared for it except that I've also read the Psalms and the Song of Solomon. And it was much more like those texts. And it was more like the Song of Solomon than anything else I've read. Parts of it were anyway, the parts that talk about the, the beauty of God's world and um, the sensuality of it, because the Song of Solomon is very sensual. Um, but the parts that were about how to live your life were so much more modern 